Hi, and welcome to the Intrepid Museum Space Shuttle Pavilion. Let's talk about the four forces of flight. The first force of flight that we're going to talk about is thrust. Thrust is the force that propels your vehicle in its desired directions. For an airplane, it's forward, but for a rocket, that's also up. Propellers, jet engines, rocket engines, that's how we get thrust. Now to illustrate thrust, we have a little experiment set up here. I have a balloon that's attached to a string. The balloon's inflated. When I let go of the balloon, the air that's inside is gonna be forced out the back end of the balloon. That's gonna be our action. Now there was a pretty bright guy named Isaac Newton who said that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, the action is the air coming out the back. Let's see what the reaction is going to be. And that's thrust. Our next force of flight is gravity. It's the force that airplanes and rockets need to overcome if they want to take flight. And what better way to demonstrate it than with a good old apple. So, if I have this apple here and let it go, it's going to fall down to the floor because of gravity. The Earth wants to pull this apple right into its center. Now, if there were no gravity, and I let go of this apple here, it would just stay there. If I pushed it, it would just go floating off in that direction until it bumped into something. But because of gravity, when I do let go of this apple, it goes right down to the ground. What goes up must come down. I'm holding in my hand right now a portion of a wing. Take a look at its shape. This is called an airfoil. This shape allows airplanes and space shuttles to generate our next force of flight, lift. As an airplane moves forward through the air, some of the air that it's going through goes over the wing, some of the air goes under the wing. Now the air that goes over the wing cannot push down as hard as the air that's moving underneath the wing can push up. So you have lower pressure on the top of the wing, greater pressure on the bottom of the wing, and that generates lift and lets airplanes fly. Space shuttles don't use lift to fly higher in the sky. They use lift to slow down their descent so that they can land on a runway like an airplane. And the Enterprise, the orbiter that's right behind me, was the first space shuttle orbiter to land on a runway like an airplane. Our final force of flight is drag. Thrust is trying to move you forward. Drag is trying to push you back. And it's generated by air and your surface area. And it's how space shuttles, space capsules, and airplanes come home safely. They use that drag to slow down so they can have a nice soft landing. Now they use it in a variety of ways, but my favorite way to illustrate drag is through a parachute. Let's see how drag is gonna get our little astronauts home safely. And that's drag, doing its thing to get our astronauts and pilots home safely. And there you have it, the four forces of flight and how they relate to air travel and space travel.